Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. You are taking us deep into this truth. And just like Jesus said, you will guide us into all truth, Holy Spirit. And that is exactly what you are doing to us. So we say thank you. And today we open our hearts to receive every word. As you speak it, we hear and receive it into our hearts. And I declare right now, everybody, if you are listening to the sound of my voice right now, hear me. Burdens are being lifted up your life right now. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is happening now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that has been a burden to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Be free from it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday I showed you a scripture in, in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. It says, Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. So, every assignment God gives to you, He releases an angel to take you to the place of that assignment and until you find the purpose of that assignment. Now I want you to understand something. The fact that you have an angel leading you, just like the children of Israel, they had an angel leading them so they couldn't have missed their way. If you think about it. Ah, you know the funny thing, like I always say, is it not amazing that the angel of God was leading them and the first place the angel led them to was an obstacle, the Red Sea. And they got to the Red Sea and they didn't know what to do. So they all stayed there, <laughs> praise God. Angel didn't do anything. They didn't do anything until they saw. Now, funny enough, when, when, the, when, the, when the army of Israel began to come behind them, you know what the angel did? The angel left them from being in their front and went behind them to form a blockage for the, for the Egyptians. So he went to stop the Egyptians from coming close. Then the people he was supposed to lead were just there, not knowing what to do, until the wisdom of God came to Moses. Now that is very important in your life. So I said, the fact that God has sent his angel to carry you to the place that he has ordained for you, it doesn't necessarily mean you will get there. He said, why? If an angel is carrying me, why will I miss it? The same way the children of Israel missed it. What will make the angel slow down? I will tell you this. You see, angels don't do everything. Angels work according to assignments and then they work according to promptings. They work according to instructions. They work according to promptings and then your assignment that have been given to them. So they have a script that they are following. Now, now, in that same script, there are seven things that the angels wait for from you before they make further advancement. If you don't know this, though you have all the angels surrounding you, you will be on one spot for many years. Just like the children of Israel, they got to the Red Sea. The angels said nothing, did nothing. And they encountered that before that sea for so long until the Egyptians got really close. Think about it. And eventually, Moses was, you know, you know, sometimes we just sit down there and we think God, God should do everything. And God should touch the heart of my boss. God should do this one. God should do this one. Have you ever asked God, Lord, what do you want me to do? <laughs> God. See, when you face an obstacle, your first question should be, Lord, I need your wisdom right here now. What would you have me do in this situation? Yes, because this is what happens. God has already spoken to the angel and said, lead them, because the angel has the script, lead them by the way of the Red Sea. And then, okay. And then God said, when you get to the Red Sea, Moses is going to part the sea. Okay. So the, now the angel doesn't know 
how Moses is going to part the sea. Because that is completely by Moses' faith. And the angel is not going to give you faith. But he will wait for your faith. You get that? So they got to the Red Sea and the angel stood and was waiting. What was he waiting for? Moses, is your turn. Part the sea. Then we go further. <laughs> and Moses stood there and he was waiting for the angel. Why did you stop? Okay, maybe we're supposed to stop. Okay, let's wait. Let's wait until something happens. Until when they saw that danger was coming. Then Moses got up. Oh God! Go read that in Exodus chapter 12 and 14. 12 to 14. He said, oh God. God immediately responded, Moses, don't cry out to me now. Tell the people to move forward. And then God says, stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. I told you last week, I'm going to tell you the, the, the role the Holy Spirit plays in our lives. And then the role angels play in our lives. Now you're beginning to see it. So Moses was connected to the Holy Spirit. And the angel has been instructed on what to do. But the angel couldn't do anything until Moses takes action. So while Moses was there wondering, what do I do? And then the Lord spoke to Moses and said, Moses, divide the sea. Now that's the only way Moses is supposed to know. As for the angel, he will lead you to your place of miracle. But how you execute that miracle is completely dependent on you. I want you to understand this part. Sometimes the place of miracle can be the place of trouble. He will lead you into a quagmire of situations. And you're wondering, how did I get here? Yes, you didn't get here by yourself. Truly, you didn't get, get, you didn't get here by yourself. The angel of the Lord can lead you there. Because he is still keeping in all your ways. There is no challenge that you have gotten into. Ah, can you receive this now? Can you receive this? There is no challenge that you have ever gotten into. That you truly got there by yourself. I'm talking to you, a child of God. Forget about those who are not children of God. They, are, they walk in darkness. So all their ways are darkness. But I'm talking to you a child of God. That time you wondered, how did I ever get into the situation? Hey, you didn't get there by yourself. You were led to that place. The question is, what did you do when you discovered you were there? That's the problem. Now, that will have to do with the knowledge of God that you have, the knowledge of his character, and the knowledge of his word. What is he telling you to do now? So you don't sit down there and relax and say the angels are doing everything. You have to pay close attention to your walk with the Spirit of God. Because he's the one that is now going to give you wisdom. He's the one that was going to tell you what to do. The angels are waiting for you to act because God has said to them there is a way he will act when he gets there. When he acts that way, then you bring deliverance to him. Mm. <clears throat> You, you, oh, <laughs> you don't understand how these things work. You are there. God, I've told you, I'm going to bless you this year. I'm going to prosper you. Yes, Lord, I believe. And God says, I will send my angels ahead of you. And that angel is going to bring you into that place of blessing, into that place of prosperity. Okay. And then now here you are. And then so, suddenly you receive some money. And I, oh, praise God, I got some money. I got some money. And the Spirit of God said, tight tight and you say mm. they say we should not tie too they say tithing is old testament they said they said they said the spirit of god is prompting you tight what you don't understand is that the lord have instructed the angels that at that junction you will bring forth your tight when you bring forth your tight then the next door should be open unto you and then you sit down there and then you stay there and then you blow all that money and you you think oh god bless me god bless me when is the next blessing why is it delayed you know you start struggling you are on one spot 
And let me tell you, and that's why I tell you, I tell you specifically, you know, when I teach on tithing, I say, listen, don't just tithe like an unbeliever. Tithe like one who knows God. So always ask the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes, you see, oh, <laughs> Nikita Haka, you don't know this thing. Sometimes God will tell the angel, look, at the, on this day, he is supposed to give money to so so and so. When he does that, there's supposed to be a transaction between A to B. Now, when that transaction takes place, then it is time for the next door to be open. And then you get to that place, and then you're wondering, okay, what do I do? What do I do? Then you go to pray, oh, Father, and then the Lord says, that tithe that you have with you, give it to so so and so. Okay, Lord, I will be. Thank you, Lord. I've heard your word. And I will be. And then you call up the person. Hey, send me your account number. I said, what, what, what's it for? The Lord just ministered to you that I should send you some money. Oh, really? Thank you. And then you obey. And then that person lifts up his hands towards heaven and says, my father, thank you. Whoa, what a miracle. You see, because God has already said, this person is going to receive a miracle from this person. When that miracle comes, you will know because he is going to praise the name of the Lord. So you see that person praising the Lord and just dancing in his house and the angels are alerted that the miracle has taken place. So it is time to open your door and then your doors are open. You don't understand. But when you don't play your part, you will stay in, in, in that place stuck for many days, many weeks, many months, even many years. And then you'll be wondering, oh, oh God, a demon. And then you go see a prophet. Oh, prophet, I don't know. I've been stagnated for many years in my life. And so mm, there is a woman in your village. She tied a cloth around a red tree. And she has said that you will never prosper. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. There is no power strong enough to stop you from moving forward. The only person that will ever stop you from moving forward is you. And your disobedience and ignorance. I want you to think about it. So I have angels walking around me and camped around me. And then I obey instructions from the Lord when He gives me. And then what happens? An opposition now stands on my way and says, You will not pass this way. Now that's none of my business. That's the business of the angels to take care of. Verse 23, Exodus 23, 23. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites. Bring you into the Amorites. He didn't say he would drive the Amorites from before you. He said he will bring you into the Amorites. What's that? Trouble. He will bring you into the Hittites. Trouble. He will bring you into the Perizzites. Trouble. And the Canaanites. Trouble. And the Hivites. And the Jebusites. Now watch this. He says, and I will cut them off. Now the angel is bringing you. Are those not those wicked people? Why are we left this way? Hey, God is sending us here to kill us. Is that what you think? No, sir. No, sir. He is sending you there because he wants to cut them off. <laughs> That's why he's bringing you there. You see that challenge that he led you to? He said, but, but God, but God, but God, but I prayed, but I, I, I prayed. Hey, calm down. What you need right now is to know, okay, Lord, I know I didn't come here by chance. So what would you have me do now? Listen, when you are faced with a big challenge, hear me, it's time for a miracle. And that miracle will only happen when you seek and receive God's wisdom. Praise God. I'm going to continue from here tomorrow because our time is up. Go out. Be blessed today. In Jesus' name. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.